督レシーブは誰にも負けませんし自分はジャンプ力もあるので攻撃にも自信がありますああそれでもう少し高さがあればな俺は小さいから戦うことすらできないのかただ大きいだけのやつに負けるのか It is somewhat easy to characterize our self worth using our own limitations and become bitter and unyielding in response to those limitations. When you come face to face with a hurdle that you can't seem to overcome, the hardest thing is, naturally, working yourself to the bone to try and overcome it, and in the end, actually overcoming it. Concurrently, the less difficult thing to do is admit defeat and resign yourself to the idea that it was impossible. Because in that case, all of the blame lies with the unfairness of the world, and none with you. It doesn't matter how hard you could have worked, it would have been a waste of time, because it was impossible. And convincing yourself of this is the key to moving on. Devastated, but resigned to the fact that life just didn't give you a good hand. And so, from then on, it is natural to give in to confirmation bias, looking for any evidence at all that you were correct in thinking that your specific hurdle was impossible, and trying your best to ignore proof of the contrary and that nagging feeling inside that maybe, if you had tried just a little bit harder, you could have done it. It's an organic human reaction. We don't want to believe that we could have achieved the dream that we gave up on, so we pretend as though it was impossible, because the alternative results in an unthinkable destruction of one's self worth. This is the sad journey of Tanji Washijo, who I consider to be one of the most beautifully executed characters in the entirety of Haikyu. It's the journey of a man who lived and breathed volleyball as a boy, who worked hard to achieve his dream to go professional. But was ultimately told by coaches that he wouldn't be able to make it due to a lack of height. His life was spent looking upon strong and tall players with envy and admiration for their ability to scale the walls that he could not, and everything he was told by others reinforced this envy. As such, Washijo believed what they said to be the truth and gave up on his dream to become a coach instead. As you'd expect, he did not grow up a happy go lucky and overly enthusiastic coach, but one of strict discipline and bitterness. And the reason this makes sense is twofold. Firstly, giving up on his heartfelt desire and passion would undoubtedly cause someone to become disillusioned with existence in general, so enthusiasm would naturally be hard to come by as life went on, and it's really no wonder that he became the grumpy old man we see in the story. And second, the strictness helped ensure that his teams would be able to be the best they could be, which is important to him for deeply rooted reasons aside from just wanting to have success. Now, at the time of the story, Washijo had crafted his team to be the antithesis of what he was as a player to reflect his adherence to this idea. The ultimate canon in Ushijima, the quintessential ace characterized by height and power, surrounded by a team full of length, defensive stability, and an egoless setter, crafted to perfectly complement Ushijima's strengths. This team is, from a conceptual standpoint, the textbook extrapolation of the type of volleyball that Washijo could not achieve, and as a result, envied and admired. So, Shida Torizawa is a representation of Washijo's philosophy and insecurity, and the special meaning behind the way he constructed the team meant that he conflated his self worth with their success to a greater extent than any normal coach would. They represent the idea that height and power reign supreme in volleyball, and that those short in stature, like him, will never be able to make it to the top. And to be clear, it's not as if they need to win the nationals every single year, but as long as they keep having a significant amount of success, Washijo can rest assured in thinking that he was correct in quitting volleyball, and that there was no chance for him. And there is also that ever present sense of vicarious fulfillment. He may have never reached those heights himself, but his team sure as hell can. And since his identity is integrated with Shida Torizawa in that juxtapositional way, that is the way he derives value from the sport now. And then he meets Hinata Shoyo in the Spring High Miyagi Prefecture Playoff Finals. 
the game starts off fairly innocuously, and the little middle blocker doesn't seem to be anything more than a minor annoyance at times. But as Karasuno slowly start to adapt and adjust to Shira Torizawa's power, not only do they emerge as a threat to stealing the crown from them, but Hinata unintentionally solidifies himself as the greatest threat to Washijo's ideals and self-worth that he has ever seen. Because for obvious reasons, Washijo sees himself, the young boy from decades ago who resigned himself to defeat, in Hinata. Yet this kid, this stubborn, fierce, determined decoy, undeniably becomes a thorn in the side of a team specifically designed to combat players of his ilk. And so, Washijo finds that he must do whatever he can to defeat Karasuno, with the end result of beating Hinata in mind more so than going to nationals. <laughs> それが自然の摂理だわ。俺は俺の40年をかけて。カラスの10番。お前を否定したい。This is a man who has built up so much spite, jealousy, and bitterness that he has become brittle. Washijo knows that if he's beaten by Hinata, someone who is as unlucky as he was, yet attempting to do what he assumed he could not, then that would be proof of the possibility that maybe he could have achieved his dream. But the regret would hit so hard that he cannot fathom accepting this and allowing it to happen. Washijo's struggle throughout the match is a desperate attempt to preserve the ego that he has been substantiating for years to combat any possibility that he was wrong. So Shida Torizawa's battle with Karasuno is in no small part a battle for Washijo to maintain his pride. So of course he's petty as all hell. Because their defeat to Karasuno, appropriately nailed home by Hinata, is indicative of the false belief that Washijo built up over the decades crashing down on him. But interestingly, this is not enough for Washijo to accept his fate, and the story has him retreat to hide behind his postured ideals once more, which I find to be a terrific narrative move tinged with realism and a genuine understanding of who Washijo is. And so, after the defeat, we go back to that concept of confirmation bias with him. During Hinata's stint as ball boy during the camp at Shira Torizawa, Washijo makes it clear to him that he doesn't believe that Hinata has any significant worth as a player without Kageyama as his setter. That Kageyama is so special that he literally gifts Hinata success. This is an allegory of Washijo grasping for straws, searching for anything that can help him salvage his pride and self-esteem. Because if Kageyama was the sole reason that Hinata succeeded, that means that Washijo was still correct to quit volleyball, since he didn't have anyone like that to support him. It's, again, an easy and lazy way to fall back and criticize Hinata. And it's incredibly unfair, but if you view it from Washijo's perspective, is it really that surprising that he tried to preserve any possible hope that he didn't spurn a chance that may have made his life substantially better? Yet, despite these words, Hinata works, and improves, and learns, and does everything possible to clear every hurdle in front of him, making the best out of every situation, seeing every chance that others might view as unfair as an opportunity to get better at volleyball. Being a ball boy, improving at receiving, learning in-game at nationals, blocking, overcoming Nekoma's trap, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hoshiyumi, doing himself proud against every opponent he faced. Throughout nationals, Hinata proved to be a special, accomplished player, and he achieved so much. Not just for a short player, but for any player in general. Ultimately, it eventually becomes insurmountable evidence that Washijo finds himself unable to defy any longer. So he owns up, tosses aside his pride, and finally accepts the reality of his situation. That Hinata cleared the hurdles that he could not, and would continue to scale greater heights. Not because of luck or unfairness, but because he simply worked harder than Washijo and saw possibilities where he didn't. This former sense of spite transforms into genuine admiration for Hinata, 
Instead of identifying with his team and continuing to conflate his self-worth with the philosophy that destroyed his professional career, through his acceptance and acknowledgement of Hinata's skill, he instead finds the courage to admit that maybe he was misled and gave up too early. That maybe it's most appropriate for him to identify with Hinata, that maybe it wasn't an impossible hurdle that was put in front of him, just an improbable one. I can't stress enough how admirable I find Washijo to be because of this, how amazing it is that he's able to not be overcome by resentment and denial. Volleyball was his dream, and he gave it up thinking it was impossible, which must have been heartbreaking. But now, towards the end of his life, he's being presented with evidence that he may have been premature with his decision in giving up, that maybe in an alternate universe where he persevered, he would have been successful. But it's far too late to go back. So early on, of course he tries to beat Hinata, to put him down, to make him give up. He's scrambling for some proof that he took the right path in life. But as time goes on, it just becomes more and more obvious that Hinata may just be able to make it and fly. And Washijo is finally able to let go, appreciate his life for what it is and was, and contextualize his identification with Hinata as a mix of empowerment and raw admiration. Washijo feels proud of and is a part of his team, but seeing Hinata overcome all odds in the matches with Japan's elite gives him a sense of vicarious gratification that surpasses what he felt with Shira Torizawa's wins for obvious reasons. Yet, it also encourages him. It shows him that this beautiful sport that he loves so much may not have as unfair a barrier for entry as he thought. That anyone can play it and achieve their dream if they work hard enough. He no longer has to champion a position that makes the sport he loves seem more cynical and cutthroat than it has to be, and at last he is able to see why, even from his sad perspective, this possibility is a positive thing. It gives him some freedom. It reignites his hope, and he goes from Hinata's biggest decrier to his biggest supporter. It represents a dismissal of the negativity that plagued him before, and it brings a new sense of optimism to his beliefs. Undoubtedly devastated and broken at his realization, yet mature enough to not let this sadness rule his life and stifle the fire of his passion. Hinata, through his progress and success, shows an eventually grateful Washijo that the world of sport is not as cruel as he assumed. And most of all, he tells him that maybe he can do it too. Many thanks for watching. Karasu's 10番の突破は俺と同じぐらいか。え、あ、え、多分。ま、これから伸びるだろうが。<laughs>